are you not in this hamster wheel? Like, uh, or are you like taking some days off to relax a bit? Uh? I basically work four days a week. And uh, every day, the, the days that I work, right, is either two hours or four hours. Uh. So I don't know. Maybe add up all the days, all the working hours. I uh, probably work, work one full day a week. Full day, yeah. Uh. Welcome back to another episode of the Backholder Pod. Today, we're going to talk about another part of our Reddit series where we'll be reacting to certain financial situations. Of course, not financial advice. But here's something that we came across quite interestingly. So we have this Reddit post with the title, Feeling Messed Up Because of No Savings. Any advice on what to do next? So of course, as self-proclaimed backholder and experts, we will jump in on this situation. So the original poster, he's 32 male and graduated from one of the three unis five years ago. So I believe he's a male because that's the timeline specific to somebody that went through the conscription. So first, you should know that I'm not great with money. So I had almost zero savings for years until literally last month. I also have racked up um, credit card debts many times during the last three years, although uh, most of it has been paid off already. So I've gotten to a point where I'm just sick and tired of not having anything in my bank account. I want to be good with money and live comfortably in future. So I'm self-employed and I freelance for clients on weekdays and do food delivery on weekends and I do not get employer CPF. So here's a picture of my finance. He has savings of $3,000 and all their savings was from the September income. The income is roughly um, $8,000, 6K from freelancing and 2K from food delivery. So his expenses work out to around $1,008. Um, not going to give the breakdown. Um, so roughly um, to pay off some of his loans and also to his food and transport and some fund money. But I think $1,008 based on the current breakdown, um, insurance $200, loans around $500. His food and transport also around 500. So just to give a flavor. His current debt is at around 44k. He has student loan, he has his POSB loan, and he has a credit card loan. So note that he works for seven days a week, of which five days freelancing for different clients and food delivery on weekends. And clearly, this isn't sustainable. Uh, and his body is feeling the strain. And he also haven't had a proper week of a vacation um, since the start of the year. So can he get, and, and basically he's asking whether he can get advice on what he should do with his money first um, and what kind of debt he should clear and how should he park his savings, etc. So I think the range of questions is probably in the ballpark of Kelvin's expertise. So maybe we'll get Kelvin to kind of explain, do you have any thoughts around um, his current situation and what would you advise him? Yeah, okay, looking at his income, uh, eight, was it 8K? 8K income from freelancing food delivery. Wow, this one not easy eh, because it's not a normal day job kind. So yeah, so basically the more you work, the more income you have. 8k is actually very impressive, right? but I, I suspect it's half dead really like to me. <laughs> oh yeah, he's also, he's also saying my body is feeling the strain of this work schedule. Yeah, basically half dead. Right? But the thing is, his expenses that he posted there was it's just thousand eight. So some something doesn't add up. So I I guess it's was spending a lot previously then he cut down to this now in that case i think to have issue really. but i think i would focus more on the debt person so his student loan psp psp loan why is there a psp loan okay never mind credit card debt this one i don't know what's the what's the correct word to use it this one very reckless uh. if you have credit card debt it just don't have right? you're, you're basically subsidizing someone else the, their ipad free gift uh, your savings only have 3k uh, and basically, I think the issue is his in is his expenses. Even though it doesn't, it's not showing here. I think it's there are other miscellaneous expenses which is adding up, so that he's he's not saving money lah. Then is that going clear? It. Then only start looking at investing lah. But before that, uh, your income I don't think it's sustainable also lah. So yeah, actually, everywhere also got problem. <laughs> yeah, what what does Bundy think? Yeah, I think I look at the profiles right. I agree with. Kelvin's assessment whereby he share, I think it's not the full picture because, okay, there are two parts to it, right? First thing is he talked about his revenue, how much he earned per month, but it's like overstretching, okay, that's one side. The other side is on the expenses. I think on the expenses part, right, he didn't share much about, about like how he used up most of his money because judging, because, okay, his financial situation also, we, we shouldn't expect that it's like the same, right? Maybe in the first few years, he was 
earning much lesser than the current rate. So that's why that that's the reason why there's not much saving now. But I think if you just judge based on today's income, how much income, how much he spent, the part that he shared, right? I think there's a missing part that is not not that clear. So I I would say that of course can work on both the revenue side and also the expenses part. But the expenses part, if he's able to break down his current spending, do some budgeting, then we can at least comment on like which are the parts that he's spending a lot more compared to like average persons who, who is earning that kind of uh, earnings. Nah. So so I also don't know like where he spent his money. It could be as simple as, you know, like online shopping, keep on clicking on online e-commerce sites and then keep on buying and buying, right? We, we don't know all this, right? The details is not, not there. We're still here. What, Bef- I think about it. before that, right, he did kind of clarify the comments, right? Maybe to add some context. So I think somebody also, um, I guess, voiced out Kelvin's question uh, saying that, hey, your income is 8K, your fixed expenses is 1.8. Then you should have a level of 6.2 to pay your debt down aggressively, which is also still decent savings. So he don't understand. Then he clarified that. Um, basically, he's saying uh, he's not sure because his freelance income is not always steady. So he had the opportunity to earn 6K monthly for now until early Feb because of a contract with a big client. So after that, um, I think they did mention they can extend the contract, but if there's no renewal, the income might drop to 3 to 4K. So I think it's naturally for somebody freelancing or doing business to the income to fluctuate. I think that's the first point. Then I guess in a way, he did say that the biggest problem is not tracking the spending. And he did admit to the fact that I think before this, he has spent a lot in the past years, but never thought of tracking. And he did say that he will take full responsibility. But to give context this year, he was laid off in February and he kept the spending to the bare minimum because it was kind of his wake-up call. Mm -hmm. So after being unemployed for a while, he decided to freelance. And in the first three months, he earned roughly 1K per month. The next two to three months, he closed the client and hit 5 to 6K. So that was the whole, I guess, journey. Mm -hmm. And he did say that he had quite a lot of credit card debt previously. So a lot of the additional savings or income went to paying off the credit card debt first and the yeah. overdue monthly bill. La. So yeah. that's the context. Yeah, I think for, for institutions, record keeping is very important because I think for average persons who is earning, let's say like flat salary, right? At least the revenue side, you don't have to record. You know how much you earn. Then you, just checking how much you save, right? You can roughly know how much you spend already, right? But for him, both the income side fluctuating, he, he might think that he's earning 6K, but it could be you know less than that. And, and then if you earn, instead of 6K, you thought you earn 6K, but actually you earn, let's say, 4K, right? And then there's missing money. So you, you, are, you are not doing a correct diagnostic of your own financial situations. So I would say that the first, first things he needs to do is really to record and very clearly documenting all his revenue, all his uh, expenses. Then only he can, you know, like make improvement based on his current situations. Lah. But the good thing is that he's 32 years old. If someone 22, uh, 32 years old and have realizations that, oh, these things hasn't tracking that well, right? And he's aware of that. He's seeking for opinions, having discussions. I think that's the good sign. Uh. I mean, that, that's the right steps, at least from now on. Because 32 is still very young and can do a lot of changes. Uh. But I would say it, it have to start from the record keeping first. Eric, I, I think you had quite a lot of takeaways or conclusion from the wake-up call, right? So maybe you want to talk more about that. Yeah, okay. So I was just looking at the things that he put out, the details, right? The most striking one I feel is the student loan, which he says still has how much left over? Still have 44, eh, 32,000, 32, and he's repaying 200 a month. So I did a quick calculation. It will take him 13.3 years to finish paying off his student loan, which I assume that he has been paying since he was 25. So he paid for seven years. He still got 13 years. A student loan of like maybe, I don't know, 70,000, you take 20 years to repay. I think that will put overhang on all your finances. I think the first thing, if I were in his shoe, right? The first thing I'll do is take out the fund money because it is not fun to pay down debt for 20 years. Uh, so that's a as ASAP doubling of the repaying. So you cut down the 13 years to like six years, six to seven years, just by taking out the fund money. The second part I will look at is probably the food and transport because he's already doing food delivery, right? So I assume that his weekends are kind of burned already. So the weekdays transport, 
I don't think he will take this much. Uh, and probably he got to tighten on the food bit. Uh. So assuming that he eats three meals outside, right? Probably I would recommend that he eats those Thai fun, no? like simple, simple fare. Uh. Don't, don't go for those Western food. Don't drink Starbucks or this. Like just tighten your belt. I think the 520, probably he can cut down to maybe about 400 without being too tight. Lah. That's another 120 that you can put towards the, the student loan. Because the student loan, 4.75% annual interest. Lah. It's not nothing to sneeze at. Lah. It's not like super low. It's not like 2-3%. It's close to 5%. So the snowballing is quite a bit. So I think I will advise that you probably can cut down to his repayment maybe about four years. Once he repay off all the student loan, right, then all that excess that he built up to repay the student loan, right, the three four hundred dollars you channel it to pay down the POSB. And related to this, he mentioned that his credit card bill are all cleared, right? That was like initial years, he, he maybe he's paying quite a fair bit on credit card interest. But now it's all done, right? I think that's also the... The right sequence now because credit card bill is even in terms of interest rate yeah, is even so higher than than all the all these student loan yeah that he he got that one correct la, paying off the credit card bill which probably is feeding off him for quite a few years yeah so just clear off those loans first then after that if he want to put back the fund money he can la, after he clear off those two loans which is probably about 500 bucks per month then you can put back the 200 for fund money and then the 300 you can you know uh, distribute it for elsewhere la. yeah so that's my my first instinct la. the the fund money you mean the traveling that he mentioned but because he haven't sent, spent much on that right or, or do you mean like the entertainment the stuff that he spent in singapore uh i'm not sure whatever he spent on 200 dollars per month oh. just tighten the belt <clears throat> i i don't think need for long Maybe you just tighten for one or two years. Yeah. Then once you pay off your debt, right? Then that interest stop accruing. When you have the in interest stopping, then you can redistribute your funds back to your other expenditure. So I think that that's yeah. I think Chicken was trying to ask me like my initial thoughts, right? On looking at this thing. Because I, I have a I have a friend, she's quite close to me. She regularly will tell me like what she feels about her job and all that. So I just think that, you know, sometimes there are people who, who think a lot about their job, think a lot about like what they're doing, why they're doing it and, and all the reasoning behind it. And then they'll plan so far ahead. Uh. Then I'm like, wow, eh, this person <laughs> really think so far ahead. And then after that, Chiking send this link. Then I see this person like, wow, like work seven days a week. Like I assume it's full days. So he's like so dead tired, like working his ass off most likely but his finances are in a mess and that keeps him in the in the wheel the hamster wheel and that doesn't allow him time to think or rather he he choose not to think about it and then he run faster and faster on the wheel then the wheel just spin faster so it makes him even more tired then he, he feels more stressed then he he will like maybe put more into the fun money and then take up more debt so it's a vicious cycle so i think the the first thing is to like what he did step out of the wheel and think about what he's doing and how he's like digging a deeper hole for himself. So once he, he stopped digging that hole, it will be easier to climb out. I think he's in good, he's in a good place now, like with all the people, all the gurus like Kelvin and all the Reddit gurus advising him how to get out of this hole. I, I think he should be out. I think if he follows the advice, the sound ones, uh, he will probably be out like maybe one, two years next that yeah I, I got a question on based on eric's the hamster wheel because i'm sort of in this thing right? so because i want to earn money so that i want to reach my goal then i keep earning keep get, getting more taking in more projects then the more i take in the more i have to work for you you are not the same eh? like i don't know how many how many days you work a week right? but are you not in this hamster wheel or are you like taking some days off to relax a bit right? i basically work four days a week and uh, every day, the, the days that I work, right, is either two hours or four hours. Uh. So I don't know, maybe add up all the days, all the working hours, I uh, probably work, work one full day a week, full day. Uh. I don't know whether that will. Okay, you're out of it already. Yeah. So 
So so I think uh, Bunti, you're muted. I was I was I was smiling because it's like discussing how long you work. Hey, how long you work? Per, uh, how long do you work? I work eight hours. No, I work forty hours. Then Eric said I work twelve hours. People thought what twelve hours per day are so long ah. Twelve hours per week. So so relaxed. So what's 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 Kelvin's point? Like oh, my point is how to get out of it basically. Like what's Eric's secret? Um. Okay. So yesterday I was sharing with you guys, right? I I went for this uh personal training with this trainer. So he he was uh, like sharing with me about his finances and everything, like how he came to own a gym and then work for himself and all that. Previously he was a trainer at a like those kind of franchise, uh, True Fitness or something like that. Yeah. So now he's his own boss. He owns his, his own gym, and then he's he's like living his life lah. he's passionate about the fitness industry so he like the whole day he's just doing fitness oh. <laughs> he's just training people like me who want to get fit yeah so so he's sharing with me that I, I was thinking to myself wow this person he's really the top of his industry lah. like his days are literally very packed almost every day i had to book him in advance to get a slot and he he, he looks fairly well to do to me lah. like he's, he's he's doing quite okay as you guys know so so i'm just thinking like okay then there are people who work hard and they enjoy their work so it doesn't feel like work to them like whole day they're just enjoying like I'm, i love i love getting fit and i love get, helping people get fit like that's what he loves to do like even if you don't pay him he'll do it so that's the life lo. that's the ideal life i think we discussed this this is the the best you're passionate about your work best but what if you're not that passionate like very hard for people to like find a work that they are super passionate about and it brings in the dough like it brings in all the all the money that you need to support your family so sometimes we are in a little bit of a compromise so like to answer kelvin's question right how do you get out of the the wheel right the first thing you need to ask yourself is the work that you're doing right is it bringing in enough okay that's number one right survival once you have brought in enough really, then you can partition some time out to think about your situation. How can you improve it? Like a lot of advice I think online now is telling people like, hey guys, just hustle, lah, just hustle, like take on a side hustle and night work, weekend work, everyday work. But that's just creating a bigger wheel for yourself. Like what Kelvin is saying, like how do you get out of the wheel? You don't create a second wheel and run move at the same time. Can, lah, you can do that. I know people who've done that. I think AK in his earlier years, he worked three three jobs. I mean, now there's people working four or five jobs, so nothing nothing very mind-blowing about that. It's just that you're running doubly hard. You're running doubly hard, then you kind of have, you won't have a life while you're doing that. And that's, it's not for a short time. Leh. It's not like for one, two years. One, two years, I can understand. But it's like for maybe more than 10 years. I think AK, he retired when, if I'm not wrong, uh, if I'm not wrong, don't quote me. I think it's about early 40s. I'm not sure the exact year, early 40s. So he grind, I think, a good maybe 18 to 20 plus years. Yeah, holding three jobs. So if you're fine with that, sure, that's that's a way to go about it. But you create another wheel for yourself. You're burning both ends. I, mm, mm, that's my point of view. Lah. So how, how do you try to use leverage. I think that's my simple answer. I don't know, in different fields, leverage works in different ways. Like Kelvin, now you're, you're, you're taking, you say you take on big, more and more projects, right? But you do you realize that you're also using a lot of leverage in your work? A bit. Eh? You're also using a lot of leverage because your reach is now like 100k. So the work that you're doing has, is more, much more amplified. So it's just the wheel is going to get easier for you. Lah. Yeah. So I think the next step probably is to see like how you can get someone else to turn your wheel. Yeah, Eric, you want to clarify on the idea of leverage. I scared people walk away with the wrong understanding of using leverage. Eric is talking about options. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand what you're talking about. I think in the sense that leverage, right, I'm referring more to like the active income. Yeah, the, the work that you are doing actually are yeah, not, not, not to... Not to pun in the stock market. That's not the leverage I'm talking about. Not to like, you're $1, you bet $200, and then you're like, whoa, <laughs> YOLO, let's, let's go. No, no, don't, don't, don't use the, the, the kind of stocks gambling leverage. It's not. The leverage, yeah, is work, work, 
how how can you leverage your work like for my line of work of course the leverage is you do one to many no? instead of one to one tuition so that that is a very simple concept a very simple idea but i didn't say it was easy la. i didn't say is everyone can do it like overnight it's easy but you have to start thinking about it because if you don't leverage your time right you're going to exchange time for money right and that's that's where we don't want to go unless you're like my that trainer passionate about his work like wow leverage time for money let's do it <laughs> let's put on more weights like he enjoys it lah. so i think different folks will use different ways to get to it i think bunti has has a great uh, balance as well want to hear his view what he thinks about this not balance i'm just Consider the lucky one. Uh, it's, it's like work is fine. I'm just thinking that like you said, though, I 100% agree that it's quite impossible to find a job. It's like perfect one. Okay, good income and then relax 12 hours a week, that kind of job. Where, where to find, right? Unless you are the entrepreneur yourself. And also you have to grind through it and then only you reach that spot, right? So I think for, for those who earn like just an average salary job, right? As long as you can find something, some, some elements within the job that you really like, right? So say, for example, you say you don't really like the exact work, but actually that work provides you the opportunity to interact with people and you like to interact with people. So, so there's some elements that you like and overall it's still something that's good enough for you. You think that you are okay to do this over the long term. You are not feeling the burnout, right? And, and as long as income cannot be, you know, earning the top income, right? you know, the top income, let's say CEO job is like, what, 10 millions per year, right? How many people can earn that kind of income? per year so as long as it's good enough you think it's sustainable and then you enjoy it you have you you have some passions not to say 100 percent as, as long as you can imagine yourself doing this for for long term i think it's still okay la. yeah and i think most importantly also any work that you are doing right you have to make sure that it's, it's something that allow you to grow say for example back to the case study we just mentioned right the person is doing some freelance i, I don't know exactly what are those freelance but even as simple as let's say video editing, it's not like you do video editing today and then three years from now, you're still doing the same thing, right? There's a lot of things to learn, there are a lot of effects to learn about, and then your charge, the rate that you charge to your customer can also go up as your skill become better, right? So as long as you are growing, you, you are able to up your skill, you are able to create more value, right? I think it's still something that you can continue to work on. But some, some work really is hard to have this kind of there's, there's no growth one. Say, for example, let's say if you want to cut down the work, right? I think the you know the uh, food delivery, I think maybe it's harder to, to grow in, in the sense of like harder to get a good skill. Maybe it's like you, you keep on cycling around, deliver foods, you, you get fit. Nah. I think that's the good part, but unlikely to get better and better over time, right? So you want to look for things that you can improve, let's say like 1% every month. So after three years, then you improve a lot already, right? So... There's also some, something to consider. Oh, I want to add on to what Eric said about the leverage part. So the leverage part, I think he's super dead now. Maybe not dead yet. He's almost dead now because he's using his own time to do everything. Basically, he's converting one to one, one dollar to one hour of his time to don't know how much of his money. La. So for leverage, other than leveraging on scale, right? For just now, the tuition business is scale. You can also leverage on your money not not say to take on more margin or options it's just to put the money where it can grow easiest one is fixed deposits or money market funds or even like stocks like etf this kind so this is considered a leverage to me like, because you are leveraging on the companies basically everyone working in the company like, they, are, they are earning more money hopefully like. then as the company grows your money will grow together with them like. so you are re leveraging on the company's expertise to continue growing then the other thing is leveraging on social media, which is what I'm doing now. Uh, and you don't have to be start a YouTube channel, you don't have to do whatever. You just share among your friends all this Shopee affiliate, right? People sign up, you get like what, using your link. Uh, people buy stuff using your link. You get like 1% to 5% of the commission. That's quite a lot also. Like, like Especially if you are a girl, you use all these face product, whatever. Uh, you say, oh, it's very good. Then you go share to your friend. Then you will start earning their, their commission. Then the other thing, if you are always working from home, uh, then you go and set up your Shopee collection. <laughs> People come to your house, collect it, hey, you get, I don't, I don't know how much, how much was it. Was it 30 cents per collection? Not a lot, lah, but it's, it's 
quite helpful also. Or maybe you got mate. Then you go and set up. Then your mate going, you'll be your work times two. Yeah, they help, she help you subsidize her cost also. Then for freelancer, you say you are a freelancer, means you know the expertise stuff. Ma. Maybe it's video editing or whatever. Then you go and hire another freelancer who wants to learn how to learn video edi editing. Then you give him 80% of the money. Then you take 20%. So that's also leveraging other people's time. So yeah, leveraging a lot of ways, like, not just scale, like, leveraging on money, on social media, on other people's time, all this kind of thing. If we can combine all this, uh, then it's easy to get rich already. Yes. Okay, I think that very nicely concludes the video. And if you guys have any other um, suggestions, please feel free to leave in the comments below. With that, we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.